Shalom, shalom. 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 Uh, first and foremost, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Ba'ashim, Yahushai, Ba'ashim, Rakaq, Kadash. The bond of the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Peace and citations to the elect. All right, uh, the title of this lesson is going to be called Holding Fast. And uh, we're going to simply get the account of uh, Jacob wrestling the angel and look into the characteristics of persistence and uh, uh, long suffering. Kind of, kind of, kind of. Yes, right, because the Most High is long suffering uh, with us, you know, through, with all of our transgressions and uh, um, unrighteousness when you look at the timeline of the Israelites through all the different captivities. Um, we have to be uh, long suffering in righteousness and fighting for uh, his grace and mercy. Sure. You know? um, and so we're going to start in Genesis, the uh, 32nd chapter, uh, in the 24th verse. And it says, and Jacob was left alone and there uh, wrestled a man with him until the breaking of the day. And when he saw that he prevailed not against him, he touched the uh, hollow of his thigh and the hollow of Jacob's thigh was out of joint as uh, he wrestled with him. Right, man. So uh, Jacob encountered an angel and they started, you know, they started getting, getting to it. You know, they started uh, squabbing it, as they say, you know, and um, they were fighting for a long period of time. It says until the breaking of the day. Mm -hmm. So whatever part of the night that they started at, okay, they were fighting until the sun came up, you know, and um, <laughs> and the angel couldn't prevail against Jacob, mm -hmm. you know, and you know, I mean, that's come on, man, you think about it. That's that's endurance right there. That's I mean, you got an angel that doesn't get tired, doesn't have to eat. You know, doesn't have to use the bathroom, but he's still, you know, but he can't be, he, you know, he couldn't be Jacob because Jacob wasn't, he wasn't a quitter. He wasn't giving up. Right. He didn't even move his, his, his thigh out of joint, man. So yeah. he dislocated. Yeah, dislocated his leg. Yeah. <laughs> and he was still going hard. And they were doing jujitsu, man. <laughs> Whatever they were doing, they, you know, they, it doesn't really go into it, but it says they were wrestling. God. Right. This is verse 26. And he said, let me go. For the day breaketh. Right. Now, so the angel said, look, let me go, man. We've been fighting all night. <laughs> you right. know what I mean? Jacob probably had him yoked up, whatever the case is. And he said, I will not let thee go except thou bless me. Right. So Jacob said, I won't let you go until you bless me. Because Jacob knew that he was wrestling with an angel. Right? Mm -hmm. And so that character that he possessed is the characteristic of a man that is persistent. You know, that's willing to endure to get what he wants. Patient, okay? And he had faith that he was going to get blessed. He showed his faith by his works, by continuing to, to you know, wrestle with the angel until he got a blessing. Mm -hmm. With a dislocated hip and all. You know, you got it. Huh. And he said, in verse 27 says, And he said unto him, What is thy name? And he said, Jacob. Mm -hmm. And he said, Thy name shall be called no more Jacob, but Yasharala. Uh, for uh, as a prince, thou hast power with the Most High and with men, and hast prevailed. Right. So uh, that was when Jacob's name was turned into Israel, Yasharala. Because why? He is a prince of the power. Okay. And what nation came forth of, from Jacob? The nation of Israel, which that's the uh, bloodline of the uh, uh, of the uh, the uh, chosen nation. Okay, he's he's the the progenitor of that. Why? Because of his uh, his fortitude, so to speak. You know, he was he was willing to uh, continue to uh, persist until he got the results that he was looking for. And though that's the uh, the trait that you know the men of the Lord uh, are going to have. In order to uh, uh, inherit the kingdom, okay, until we get that blessing, because we know it's coming. We have faith that it's coming. Mm -hmm. You know, we're fighting against spiritually these uh, uh, these demons, and temptations, okay, preventing ourselves from being uh, sucked up in the world into the world. Praying to Yahweh Shem that He doesn't allow it. That's you know that's that endurance uh, uh, that that it's likened unto that endurance that Jacob showed. When he was wrestling with the angel, you know, it said, and 
uh, it says, Thou hast power with the Most High and with men and has prevailed. You see, so it's already written that the elect are going to prevail uh, against the world, so to speak, three hour shot. Um, mm -hmm. Now, I know the next scripture we have was uh, Hosea. Kind unless you have something. No, no, no. I can pull it real quick. Hosea 12? Yeah, kind of. Hosea chapter 12, verse 3. And he said, He took his brother by the heel in the womb, and by his friend he had power with the Most High. Right. And so this is talking about, of course, Jacob. And um, even, you know, when they were, when they were, when Jacob uh, and Esau were born, Jacob didn't let go. He didn't let go of that heel that, uh, uh, you know, of Esau, because he knew, you know, he uh, it was a spiritual representation of uh, the, the kingdom to come after Esau gets put up, set up in rulership. Jacob and Israel, uh, Jacob or the nation of Israel is going to rule. You see? Mm -hmm. Yeah, God. God, verse 4 it says, Yeah, he had power over the angel and prevailed. He wept and made supplication unto him. You see? Mm -hmm. Is that verse 4? God. Okay. Yeah, man. So that's <laughs> that, that's showing you um, that those things were remembered. Okay? That's the that's the uh, the mindset, you know, that we ought to carry. When it's easy to give up with a dislocated hip, you know, with a thorn in the flesh, whatever you, you know, whatever your uh, ailment may be, you know, mentally or physically or both. Let's re, you know, re, uh, 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 recount that that um, story in Genesis. You know, when Jacob persisted. That's why these things are written. Um, mm -hmm. I think that's the that's the end of that one, right? Okay. Okay. Um, so next we can get that. Uh, I know you want that in Syria, right? Or you want to go with Revelation? Uh, I got Revelation 2 and 25. Okay, let's do that one. Revelation chapter 2, verse 25. It says, uh, but that which ye have already uh, a whole fast till I come. Right. But that which ye have already, which is what? Really, the, the scriptures say the kingdom of heaven is within you. All right, that faith that we have that is going to come to pass we ought not to let go of it, okay? Because really, like I said, the uh, uh, the kingdom, man, it, we already know it's coming, but it just hasn't been given unto the nation of Israel yet. But it, we know it's coming, so we ought to hold fast unto that. Hold fast unto that mentality that it is coming because it surely will come, you know? Mm -hmm. um, that was, that's really, oh, well, we can keep going. Come on, it says, and he that overcometh and keepeth my works until the end, mm -hmm. to him will I give power over the nations. Right. Oh, That's can right. we get can we get that word in the Greek whole fast? Matter of fact, let me see if I pull it up real quick. I want to get that get that hurt whole fast. I believe it's all one word. Let me see. Uh, yeah, whole fast. So yeah, uh, Quartel. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Quartel. Mm -hmm. So it says, uh, to have power, be powerful, be chief. Let's see. Uh, the third definition says, to hold, to hold in the hand, to hold fast. For example, not discard or let go, to keep carefully and faithfully. So what is that that we ought to keep carefully? This truth, this thing of ours, man, which is dear unto us, wisdom, which is likened unto a woman, is supposed to be cherished. You know, mm -hmm. and um, it also says to to have power, be powerful, to be chief, be master of, to rule, to uh, to get possession of, to become master of. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's what we're doing with this truth. We're becoming a, a you know, a masters in our own rights of, of understanding mm -hmm. the uh, the the uh, the truth of how the universe is to operate. Because when we when we're given that spiritual power. We're 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 gonna be able to uh, command the elements. We're gonna be able to uh, rule the complete righteousness and understanding, man. It's gonna be beautiful, man. So we are to uh, to take hold of this faith, man. You know, because we're looking to be, you know, you know, it's kind of cheesy, but masters of the universe, like he, man. You know, mm -hmm. um, well, that's what the, that's what the scripture says when you read it. You want to read a little bit more? You, you got that more definition. Right here it says to continue to hold to retain mm -hmm. of death, continue to hold one, uh, to hold in check, restrain. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. That's it, man. Yeah, man. So the moral of the story is is to keep it 
uh, uh, carefully, okay, and to cherish it and to hold on with, with vigor. Mm -hmm. uh, continuing on in Revelation chapter 2, and uh, we read verse 26. So verse 27 says, And he shall rule them with a rod of iron, mm -hmm. as the vessels of a potter shall they be broken into shivers, even as I have received of my father. So the nation of Israel, starting with the elect, the 144,000 particularly, is what this is talking about, is going to rule over the nations with a rod of iron, which represents rulership. That rod of iron represents rulership, authority, dominion. Okay? It says, and they shall be broken to shivers. So when you take a when you take a pot and you slam it on, you take a you know a, a ceramic pot. And you slam it on the concrete, that's getting broken into shivers. All right, so uh, uh, we're going to go ahead and get that one in Sirach. We we'll get that in Sirach. Okay. 4 and 28. This is Ch Sirach chapter 4, verse 28. It says, Strive for the truth until death, mm -hmm. and the Lord shall fight for thee. Con. So, striving for the truth. Man, I wish you could go into the concordance on that. Mm -hmm. All right, but we can get the definition of that word strive. Con. You know? Um, to strive for the truth unto death, man, is really self-explanatory. If you're striving, you fight and you claw and you do whatever you can to accomplish whatever goal that you have in mind. Right. This is the dictionary. Uh, in the dictionary, it says strive. It says to make, uh, make great efforts to achieve or uh, obtain something. Mm -hmm. Struggle or fight vigorously. Right. So making that great effort, doing whatever it takes. Okay, whenever, you know, even if you're down and you don't have, you know, the odds are against you, so to speak, mm -hmm. we still ought to, what does it say? Um, that word to, uh, with vigor, something with vigor. God, it says, it says to struggle or fight vigorously. Yeah, we're, we're still, you know, it may be a struggle, you know what I mean? But if you prevail, then that fight is won. You get a W, you know? So, um, can we read that verse again? Time. It says, uh, Sirach chapter 4, verse 28. It says, strive for the truth until uh, uh, death. Right. So fight vi vigorously. Struggle, uh, uh, struggle, man, for, <laughs> to obtain the truth, to obtain the, uh, the rest, I should say, uh, uh, unto death if necessary. And, you know, like I said, that's, that's the moral of the story, man. Fight, mm -hmm. you know, continuing to fight on. Um, is there more on that? No, that's it. Okay, so we can go to uh, uh, Revelation three. Uh, I actually got it here. You can uh, you can hold uh, Hebrews ten and twenty three. I'm gonna get this in Revelation three. Okay. Uh, Revelation chapter three, verse eleven. It says, "Hmm." Actually, I'll read it. Verse. Uh, I'll read this in verse uh, ten. Revelation three and ten says, "Because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation." which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. Okay, and this is uh, how we start speaking to the church in Philadelphia, letting them know that since they have been faithful, the most, uh, the most High is going to allow them to be preserved and to be kept from that uh, hour of temptation, you know? So yeah, you know, there's going to be times where we're tried, but that hour of temptation that this is talking about is going to be coming upon, you know, the two thirds, uh, coming upon those who are disobedient to the most high word. They're going to really be tempted because what does the scripture say? Uh, 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 deliver us. Uh, I'm sorry. Lead us not into temptation and, and, uh, and deliver us from evil. Okay. Because yeah, like I said, even though the scriptures say that if we're going to be, uh, tried as gold in the fire, the elect, we're still going to be preserved from buckling. From you know, from being completely uh, 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 destroyed, so to speak. Mm -hmm. um, it says, "I will also keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the world, to try them that dwell upon the earth." And those, most of those who get tried, are going to get burned up. Okay, I bet that word "try" is even pretty deep. Um, verse eleven it says, "Behold, I come quickly. Hold that fast which thou hast, that no man take thy crown." Mm -hmm. So Yahushua is letting us know to remember and keep it on thoughts. Hey, I'm coming back soon. Okay? And so that thing that you have, going back to Revelation 2 and 25, that faith, okay, this thing of ours, we ought to keep 
and hold fast. We, we went into the, uh, the definition of the word. Okay. Hold fast, which thou hast. Like I said, we, it's like, it's like, we, you know, we fight, you know, we fight, of course, to obtain it, but we know it's coming, man. You know, we hold, we, so we, so that's, that's something tangible to us. You know, that faith is tangible to us, but not to everyone. Um, it says that no man take thy crown. Now, do we actually have crowns on our heads? See, because it goes into that second as is the uh, third or the fourth chapter where it talks about how Yahweh shall crown those that stood so stiffly for his word. OK, and so this really is a, a reminder of, of the of, of the the blessing that's to come. Uh, let me see here. Yeah, this is a uh, second Ezra chapter two. And verse 45. It says, uh, he answered and said unto me, these be they that have put off the mortal clothing and put on the immortal and have confessed the name of the most high. Now are they crowned and receive palms. See, so we're going to be crowned in the future. All right. But it's like, you know, you got a, um, an incentive, you know, to to, you know, achieve a goal. Say, for example, you in school, you get straight A's. You know, and yet, you know, in high school or whatever, they say, okay, if you get straight A's this semester, you know, we're gonna buy you a car. Well, if you don't get straight A's, it's like that car getting taken from you, even though you know that you don't have it yet. You know that if you get straight A's, you're gonna get it. But if you don't, it's like it's getting taken from you because it's been promised to you. You know, and that's the same thing uh, with us, uh, correlating to the uh, correlating to the scriptures, man. We understand that the promises are coming to the elect, those who endure. So we don't want to miss out. We don't want to be disqualified, so to speak, in that blessing that's to come. Let's see. Uh, so really, that's the point right there. And uh, you got that in Hebrews or another precept? I have uh, ten first, first Timothy chapter six. Um, uh, what did I want? Uh, first Timothy chapter six, verse twelve. It says, fight the good fight of faith, lay hold on eternal life. And so that's, you know, just going back into that word striving, what we were talking about, we got to continue to, to fight, press forward um, in faith and enduring, man, because there's going to be a, a, a many obstacles that we're going to have to overcome uh, while we're here in this captivity, man. You know, so we have to fight the good fight of faith, laid hold on eternal life, because that's what we're seeking for. Just like when we read in Revelations, talking about how we're gonna uh, 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 we're gonna rule over these nations, man. But that's gonna be in the kingdom, man. And now we we know that that kingdom is gonna be forever, man. Okay, and that's what we're striving for. We're striving to be uh, at the at the top echelon in the kingdom of heaven. Okay, it says, "Whereunto thou art also called." And has professed a good profession before many witnesses, right? And so, that, you know, that's why we go out on the highways and the byways. That's why we do these lessons. That's why we do these sit downs. That's why we pray and we fast. Um, we, we congregate fellowship um, because we're striving towards that mark. We're, we're, we're fighting and pressing for that uh, end goal to be uh, to get that crown. You know, just like when Peter asked the Lord, you know, you know, what are we going to get after doing all this? He said, mm -hmm. well, you're going to receive a, a crown and you're going to be able to judge um, over the 12 tribes of the nation of Israel, man. Mm -hmm. and, and ultimately the whole whole uh, planet Earth, because the end, you you know, you, you have they have the end in mind, which was the promises that was given to Abraham, Isaac um, and then uh, Jacob, mm -hmm. whose name was changed to Israel, uh, which his lesson is concerned. Mm -hmm. OK. Uh, we're going to jump over to Hebrews chapter 10 Verse 23 It says let us hold fast the profession Of our faith without wavering God. Okay For he is faithful That uh, for he is faithful That promise Right so holding fast Read that word profession God. You know, uh, Really it's our duty to do this work Okay And so quitting the job or uh, Taking our hands off the plow Oh that was a scripture that popped up we can get um, uh, uh, Luke 6, 9 and 62 um, after, after we get that. As a matter of fact, I'll get it. But uh, let me know when you get that word. Okay. Because it says, for he is faithful that promised. Okay. And we know, like I said, 
uh, what we got? We got uh, uh, Jeremiah, 32nd chapter. Okay. Ezekiel, uh, the 37th chapter. Going into the promises, the uh, second, the new covenant. Okay. The book of Hebrews talks about, matter of fact, we in it. Uh, what was that? Hebrews 7. It talks about the new covenant or 8. 8. Hebrews 8. You know? Mm -hmm. um, here we go here. Hebrews chapter 8 and 8. It says, for finding fault with them, he saith, Behold, the days come, saith Yahweh, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and all the house of Judah. Okay, so that new covenant is coming where he's going to write our laws, or write his laws in our in our uh, our inward parts, man. Okay, and we are basically going to be uh, 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 programmed not to go off, man. Okay, so that makes us going to make us immortal. So holding fast to that profession, you got that word, bro? Kind. Okay, it's, uh, it's, it's important. Profession is homologia. Homologia, um, where it says profession subjectively, whom we profess to be ours. Um, What's the second one? Objectively? Yeah, objectively, profession. Confession. Uh, uh, what one professes or confesses. Right. So we hold fast to the thing that we confess, our testimony. We don't switch it up. We're not going to, uh, you know, when the pressure is on, Lord willing, we those men, those, those men are not going to fold and, and, you know, sell out or be um, uh, 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 persuaded to lie and say, oh, no, all those things I did, all those things I said, I take it back. We're not going to take it back, man, because we believe wholeheartedly. Um, you got that matter of fact, I'll get it in I'll get it in Luke real quick. Um that's why it says without wavering. You know, you don't want to be topsy turvy. Mm -hmm. You know. Uh real quick, real quick. Luke chapter nine and sixty-two, it says, And how shall I said unto him, No man having put his hand uh to the plow, all right, meaning started to do the work, go out on the highways and byways and preach and teach. No man having put his hand on the plow. And looking back is fit for the kingdom of the Most High. So when you look back, you turn back, you take your hand off the plow, then you basically quit. You started, you know, laboring in the truth, and then you said, "Oh man, it's getting too hard." <laughs> you know, let me stop. Let me stop doing the work. And then you you got to you know you building you know you building the spiritual temple, and and you abandon the other brothers. You know this this uh this building, man. And we have no choice but to keep on and persist. But it's like, man, you know, that's a scary thing to to uh, lose that that spirit to continue uh, uh, to push on, man. OK, that spirit to hold fast. You know, it's all a mentality thing. Do you have anything else? Brother? Uh, this is Hebrews chapter six, verse 10. It says, for the most high is not unrighteous to forget our, your work and labor of love, mm -hmm. which ye have showed towards his name. So the most high is not to forget, um, you know, the works that you're putting in. Mm -hmm. You know, going into your profession, a confession of uh, Yahweh and Yahweh Shai. You know, you know, if we're doing it uh, in sincerity and truth, He's not going to forget that work. You know, okay. and, and we we're, we're following that in faith. And says, which ye have showed towards His name, and that ye have ministered to the saints and do minister. And we desire that every one of you do show the same diligence to the full assurance of hope until the end. And so that's that's that's. What we're commanded to do, man, to put this work in and knowing in faith that Yahweh Yahshai is, is not going to uh, forsake the work that we're doing um, because we're casting off the world, man. Come. Okay. Come. Yeah, man. Like it, this goes back to that without wavering, you know, not quitting. You know, you got uh, you got quitters. What is uh, what is that saying? Uh, quitters never win, and winners never quit. Mm -hmm. How you gonna win if you quit in the middle of it? Mm -hmm. You know, um, like I said, it all goes back to mentality. So really, that's the point. I believe the the point was made. Uh, do you have any any other comments, brother? That's it. All right, hey, well, Lord willing, uh, your brothers were edified. Uh, we're gonna give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai by Hashem, Rakhak Badash. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone, and peace and salutations to the elect. Shalom.